Welcome to Worship from Trinity this morning. And a particular warm welcome to Wallace Edwards who will be leading worship. Our call to worship. On the first Sunday in Advent, we begin to look forward to the celebration of the birth of our Lord. We begin our worship by lighting the Advent candle. God's people waiting and hoping. A light shines in the wilderness, shines through a bush, shines across the desert sands. A sign to a reluctant leader, a sign to an enslaved people, a people trapped, a people locked down, a people seeking liberation, a people waiting to be free. Now the reading is from Exodus chapter 6, verses 6b to 8. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. I will take you as my people and I will be your God. You shall know that I am the Lord your God, who has freed you from the burdens of the Egyptians. I will bring you to the land that I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. I will give it to you as a possession. I am the Lord. Let us take a moment to reflect on our own stories of waiting and hoping. May we catch a glimpse of the distant light amid the distractions of the lockdown. May we hear the soft whisper of the voice of God. Amen. We will now sing our first hymn from singing the faith, 169. Come thou long expected Jesus. Let us pray. God our Father, we praise and thank you that we can worship you together this morning. You have blessed us in many ways and for that we offer our thanks. And at this time of year we prepare to celebrate the very special gift of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who came to offer salvation to all. We confess our many faults, 
but in humility we ask you to forgive us all our sins. And our prayer is that as we prepare to celebrate the birth of our Lord, we may be inspired by his life, death and resurrection to live better lives. Bless every part of this our service and bless every service held in your name today. We ask this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now we join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The first Bible reading this morning is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Chapter 1, verses 3 to 9, found on page 205. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. I always give thanks to my God for you because of the grace he has given you through Jesus Christ. For in union with Christ, you have become rich in all things, including all speech and all knowledge. The message about Jesus Christ has become so firmly established in you that you have not failed to receive a single blessing as you wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be faultless on the day our Lord Jesus Christ. God is to be trusted, the God who called you to fe have fellowship with his son Jesus Christ our Lord. Um. Our second reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 1 to 13. The parable of the ten girls. The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Once there were ten girls who took their oil lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and the other five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take any extra oil with them, while the wise ones took containers full of oil for their lamps. The bridegroom was late in coming, so the girls began to nod and fall asleep. It was already midnight when the cry rang out, Here is the bridegroom, come and meet him. The ten girls woke up and trimmed their lamps. Then the foolish ones said to the wise ones, oh, Let us have some of your oil because our lamps are going out. No, indeed, the wise ones answered. There isn't enough for you and for us. Go to the shop and buy some for yourselves. So the foolish girls went off to buy some oil. And while they were gone, the bridegroom arrived. The five girls who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast and the door was closed. Later, the other girls arrived. Sir, sir, let us in, they cried out. Certainly not. I don't know you, the bridegroom answered. And Jesus concluded, Be on your guard then, because you do not know the day or the hour. Thanks be to God.
sing our next hymn from Singing the Faith, number 181, of the Father's love begotten. Before we meditate upon God's word, let us have a brief prayer. And this is the collect for the first Sunday in Advent. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. Now, in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility. That on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to life immortal. Through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Advent, as the Latin scholars among you will know, comes from the Latin word venio, to come. Now Julius Caesar is reputed to have said, Veni, weedy, weeki. I came, I saw, I conquered. But for us as Christians, Advent is a time of repentance and dedication and meditation. We are called upon to cast away the deeds of darkness and put on the armour of light. 
Today, the first Sunday in Advent is different from the original Celtic pattern. For the Celts, Advent began on the 15th of November. So, after lunch, if you count on your calendars from the 15th of November to Christmas Eve, it's 40 days. 40 days of preparation. The phrase 40 days comes up several times in the Bible. But the parable, which was our New Testament lesson this morning, the scenario is a Middle Eastern wedding. And the girls that we heard referred to, five were wise, and as one wag said, five were otherwise. These were all waiting to welcome the bridegroom. And then they would all go with her, him to the bride's home, and then from there into the wedding uh, celebrations. But there was a delay in the coming of the bridegroom. But at midnight, there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. And this is an echo of the theology that in the days of the New Testament, St. Paul speaks of the day of the Lord coming like a thief in the night. Well, the bridegroom came at midnight. Well, five of the girls were prepared. They had their lamps lit and they had reserves of oil. But a crisis arose for the other five, described as the foolish maidens. Why? Their lamps were beginning to go out and they did not have enough reserves of oil. The lesson is, we do not know when a time of judgment will come. The Greek word crisis means judgment. And the coming of the bridegroom was a judgment on the foolish maidens. They did not have enough reserves of oil. For us as Christians, what is the symbol of these reserves of oil? Well, we need to be prepared for the coming of the Son of Man. Our, our Gospel lesson was from the 25th chapter of Matthew. Well, if you turn sometimes to a chapter 24, you'll see a heading, the coming of the Son of Man. For us as Christians, this is a meaning of the coming of Jesus into our lives. The crisis came suddenly. This is the first point. The crisis can come suddenly. The present pandemic came suddenly for most of us. Although possibly the scientists could see it coming. But it has affected us in our church life. We rejoice that next Sunday Trinity will be open for worship. But for so many Sundays we've been unable to join together as a congregation. Personally, I miss the fellowship of other Christians in the church. We have the, the friends who welcome us at the door. That's a ministry. We have the other friends who provide refreshments. Making a cup of tea doesn't sound much, but it's an opportunity of fellowship. 
not that I miss, but also by prayer. This is an essential ingredient in our Christian lives, prayer and Bible study, and also the testimony of other Christians and other faiths. Now we heard read in the beginning from the book of Exodus, reminding us of the deliverance of the Hebrews who were slaves in Egypt. Now we've all been saddened recently by the death of Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, who was the chief rabbi, Jewish rabbi in this country for many years. I used to like listening to him on thought for the day and he gave some powerful messages in a very short time and one year it was approaching Easter for us but Passover for the Jews and he said we emphasize on our Jewish people remember the deliverance from Egypt that is the bedrock of our faith, he said. Tell your children about it. Tell your grandchildren about it. It's the deliverance which came by the hand of God. And of course, we as Christians, uh, <clears throat> Judaism was the cradle of Christianity. And we regard the deliverance which came through our life and death of Jesus on the cross. Well, the pandemic, it comes suddenly, affects people in different ways. And also, uh, in 1987, I was a minister in the Berkshire town of Hungerford. And one lovely, um, August afternoon, it's a quiet day, but a man went around shooting people. He started in Savanak Forest, worked his way down to Hungerford. Now, the position was complicated because some people had shooting rights to enable them to go shooting on Hungerford Common. So, Townspeople thought, well, somebody's shooting on the common. It took a time to realise that this man, Michael Ryan, he was going around the town shooting people willy-nilly. Uh, the town responded magnificent, magnificently. It was a, it's a small, closely knit community. But what was interesting and rather sad in a way. No one knew much about this man, Michael Ryan. Two things came out. First of all, he was a loner. Secondly, he had a quiet disposition. Now you could describe many people uh, in that way. We never found out what triggered him to start going around shooting people. His poor mother did two jobs to raise money because he was a member of two rifle clubs. But what caused him to shoot the people? <clears throat> we never found out. But this came to my mind a few weeks ago when it was Mental Awareness Week. Quite rightly, more attention is given nowadays to mental illness. Once upon a time, if a person was mental, off they were sent to the asylum and forgotten. But now we know people can have a mental illness and be walking and conducting a normal life. Well, let us pray for those who 
to suffer in this way. But that came as a shock. The judgment comes suddenly. Secondly, it comes personally. Five girls were ready, five were not ready. And the foolish girls asked a sensible question to the wise, let us have some of your oil. Oh no, the wise said, there won't be enough for us all. The bridegroom is coming. And when a crisis comes, it comes to us personally, very often. Sickness, bereavement, redundancy, unemployment. Let us take bereavement. I remember hearing a lecture once by a chaplain in the Luton and Dunstable Hospital. The lecture actually was in our chapel in Waterloo Road, Dunstable. That's closed now. But this chaplain said, you as clergy and church officers have to help people in bereavement. You are tempted to say sometimes, I know how you feel, but don't say that because you do not know. Bereavement affects people differently. Likewise with unemployment, the government have warned us there may be a lot of unemployment due to this pandemic. And that affects people in different ways. I once was employed in the Ministry of uh, National Insurance, it was called. I dealt with all sorts of claims. But unemployment, in the case of one man, off he'd go to the um, DWP office to draw his money. That was that. But a matter of fact. Another person, if he was made redundant, he would feel, I'm no good. Society doesn't want me. Society has no use for me. It can be a mental suffering. Judgment and the test comes to us individually. And thirdly, and this is a more um, difficult one, when the bridegroom came, the wise girls went in, and then the door was shut. And some of the preachers of a previous generation would go to town on that, depicting the day of judgment. As some been saved, and some being eternally damned. Well, I don't go down that road. My opinion is, and I read this by one theologian, in life, there are problems which come to us, situations which call for a response. Sometimes we rise to the occasion other times we fail and after the crisis have gone <clears throat> we ask ourselves how did I fail but in life the deed is done and cannot be undone or sometimes we may say a foolish word and for us as clergy words are important but when we say them we can't recall them and sometimes we say well i wish i didn't say that we can apologize to another person they may say oh it's all right but we wonder have they really forgiven us it's a little niggling sense at the back of our minds but my comfort is Psalm 103. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he that is God 
remove our transgressions from us. The Lord is gracious. The Lord is merciful. And of course, in the person of Jesus, that forgiveness shines from the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We're all included in that forgiveness. In the words of Charles Wesley's hymn, for all, for all, my Saviour died. Uh, let us use this time of Advent to ask God to forgive us, to review our lives and rejoice that we can look forward to celebrate the birth of our Saviour. Good news to all, forgiveness for all. Amen. Now, during Advent and Christmas, I always think of those who are refugees in today's world. And it's a perpetual challenge, refugees coming to this country from other countries. Well, we'll now sing hymn 193, remembering that the Holy Family, Mary, Joseph, and the infant Jesus, they were refugees having to flee from the cruel Herod to another land, that is Egypt, born in the night, Mary's child. Let us pray. Advent God, you heard the cry of your people and came to the world in Jesus Christ. You come to us as we wait in hope and for light in a dark world. You come to us to open new ways of living and come to our, come and come near to us now in our prayers for the world we pray for all those affected by sickness around the world we pray for all those who work 
to bring healing to those who are suffering in body, mind or spirit. For the NHS, for counsellors, for all who support others. And especially we pray for those we know in need of healing. Faithful God, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are grieving the loss of family and friends. For those who feel helpless, powerless, guilty, distraught. Faithful God, hear our prayer. We pray for all those caught up in situations of violence, for those in lands where war is raging, for refugees far from home in places that are unsatisfactory, for those in homes where abuse takes place. Faithful God, hear our prayer. And we pray for our church here, for churches across these islands and throughout the world. We may be alert to your presence in the world of need and draw others closer to your love. Faithful God, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves. We too suffer. We too grieve. We too struggle confusion. We too have anxiety. And we accept your promise to come into our lives as we open ourselves to your coming. This day we offer all our prayers in the name of Jesus who came, who comes, who will come. Amen. And so to our final hymn, uh, which is Sing We the King. Singing the Faith 185.
dark shall not darken his witness within. Hell has no terrors and death has no sleep. Love is victorious when Jesus is King. Come let us see, praise to all King, Jesus our King. Our song to Jesus belong. Glory to Jesus, to Jesus our King. Kingdom of Christ for your coming, we pray. Hasten, O oh Father, the dawn of the day. When this new song your creation shall sing. Satan is vanquished and Jesus is King. Come let us sing praise to your King. Jesus our King, Jesus our King. This is our song to Jesus belong. Glory to Jesus, to Jesus our King. Before we have oh, our final prayer, I'd like to thank all who have taken part in this service this morning. It's been a combined effort. Thank you, all of you. Tomorrow is St. Andrew's Day. And this prayer is a prayer for that day. Let us pray. Almighty God, you gave such grace to your holy apostle Andrew, who readily obeyed the call of your son Jesus Christ, and who took his brother Simon, later known as Simon Peter, to Jesus. May we, may we be inspired to continue to follow Jesus and to bring others to our Lord. Now we all join in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.